All right, welcome back everybody to the final topic of fluids. We're going to be talking about Torselli's law. It's a, It looks a bit complicated at first, but I think once you get the hang of it, it's relatively simple. So anyway, here we go. According to Bernoulli's principle, when water is in an open container, open container meaning like usually the top is open, and there is a there's a place where the water can come out below, in this example here, 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 uh, the surface of the water, the water that squirts out will have the same speed as if it was dropped from the height of the surface of the water. So it's just like a pretty cool law. So, you know, we know how to calculate something falling, the speed of something falling. So if something starts from rest here and it falls all the way here, we can find what that velocity is. But what the cool thing is to know is this velocity here and this velocity here are exactly the same. Same thing if the raindrop dropped here and fell all the way up to this point. This velocity and this velocity would be exactly the same as well. So it's this cool law that was found. Um, and yeah, all those are kind of equal to each other. So you can kind of, a lot of times you can use the energy principle. So you can say, okay, the potential energy at this point is equal to the kinetic energy at this point in order to find what these velocities are. Okay. And you can see where the where this law comes from, the form of derivation here. I highly suggest looking at that. Okay, moving on. So a water droplet falls from rest from a height h. How fast is the droplet going compared to the speed of the water uh, is rushing out of the container? Um, so anyway, we kind of just talked about this. This is what, exactly what Torcelli's law is, but the drop is going at the same speed. Okay, so yes, if it's dropping from the same height as the, the surface of the water is, then this speed and this speed are going to be the same. Okay, directions are different, speeds are the same. Okay, a container of water has a hole near the bottom of its container as shown to the right. As the water decreases, how does this affect the speed at which the flow, the flow, as which the water flows out of the hole? So, as this is going to get low, this is going to get lower and lower. So, let's say the water is like all the way over here. What's going to happen is the velocity is going to decrease. Okay, there's less pressure, and you know, according to Torcelli's law, you know, the smaller that height is, the slower it's going to go. So, the speed decreases. Okay, so let's do some math problems here. A container of water has a hole near the bottom of its container as shown in the, uh, to the right. If the height of the hole from the surface of the water is 0 0.5 meters, uh, how fast is the water rushing out in this instance? Okay, so finally we're doing an example problem here. And, you know, to figure out what this velocity is going to be equal to, we pretty much just need to find what would be the velocity of something like a ball being dropped over here, going over here, which which isn't too difficult, okay? Because these two velocities would be the same, or the speeds. So all I'm going to be doing is just, uh, I'm just going to be looking at this vertical aspect. I'm just going to be potential energy is equal to kinetic energy to figure this out. You could even use kinematics if you want, but I'm going to say mass of the water, gravity, times height is equal to one half of the water velocity squared. Mass cancels out. What are we looking for? Velocity. I'm going to bring this 2 over 2gh square root equals v. So 2g is 10. The height is 0.5. So v. So let's see what v equals. Uh, oh, it's square root of 10. So we get 3. 0.16 meters per second. Okay. So relatively easy. It seems a bit complicated, but you know, relatively easy. You could have also done kinematics to figure this out. You could have done V final squared is equal to V initial squared plus 2A change of Y, and you get the same answer. Okay, anyway, moving on. A, a container of water has a hole near the bottom of this container. Uh, there's a cup trying to catch the water coming out as shown to the right. Okay. If uh, okay. h is equal to point, 0 0.7, okay, so let me just kind of 0.7, capital H is equal to 
uh, a cup is placed so that it catches the water coming out. Look at the diagram to solve for x. So we're looking for what x is equal to. Great. Uh, a lot going on here. Um, this is honestly more of a projectile motion problem than anything. But let's figure out a first a few things. So this is going to be the first step is to figure out what is this in velocity going to be. Okay. So let's try and do that. I'm just going to be doing again mgh is equal to 1 half mv squared. Kind of just from last time, I just know that velocity is equal to square root of 2gh. Um, and let me just put that in. h is 0.7 times 10 times 2. Find the square root of that. And we get 3.74 meters per second. Okay. And then the second step is... Okay, now that this is going 3.74 meters per second, and it's going to be falling a distance of 1.2 meters, how far is this x going to be? So projectile motion kind of problem, we're doing, we're going to be writing everything we know in the x and the y. Acceleration of x equals 0, acceleration of y equals negative 10. Um, velocity in the x is going to be equal to 3.74. Velocity initial in the y is going to be equal to 0. Um, displaced in the x, that's kind of what we're looking for. Displaced when the y is equal to negative 1.2. And then that's it. So we need to find this displacement of the x, but we only have two pieces of information. So we're going to solve for time first. So let's do that. I'm going to use the formula displacement of the y is equal to v initial y t plus 1 half a y t squared. So this is going to be negative 1.2 equal to 0 plus 1 half negative 10 t squared. So t is equal to, let me just do this, um, sorry, 2 divided by 5. And so it's going to take around 0 0.49 seconds. To, for the water to hit the ground. Okay. Uh, five. Let me do that one more time just in case. One point two divided by five. Yep. Okay, great. Um, now that we have that, we can solve for this displacement x. So we can do displacement x is equal to vxt plus one half axt squared. Uh, vx is 3.74. Time we just found out 0.49 and this is all zero because acceleration x is zero. So now we can just do this 3.74 times 0.49 and we get around 1.83 meters. Okay, so that's what this x needs to be 1.83 meters. Uh, as the water drains, which way should the club uh, slide? And so what's going to happen is as this water goes down the velocity is going to decrease. And if the velocity decreases, that means this cup should slide to the left because it won't be going as fast out. Okay. All right. So I think that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching all of this, guys. And I hope to see you guys in the next chapter. Bye.